Hi guys, uh, I hope you're all doing well. I kind of want to go back and start touch on something that I made a video about about a month ago. Uh, when I was talking about the 72 angels of the Shem operation and the 72 Goetic entities and how they're all uh, portions of our psyche, it, it brought up a couple of questions. A couple of people were saying, does this mean that everything is in your psyche? I'm not, I, and I wanted to clarify and say that I'm not saying that all of magic is just psychological. That is absolutely untrue. There is a great, great deal more to it than that. A lot of which is energy work. Energy work, much like you would find in Chinese Taoist systems, you know, like ancient Chinese magicians who uh, came up with all of these energy circulation practices. We do a lot of that same thing in ceremonial magic. That is the other half of the training. The thing is, whenever you're doing those things, those kind of seemingly external energy exercises, you are still doing something to yourself internally. And the way, the only way I can think of to illustrate this is to bring up a question that somebody else asked. Somebody said, should they cover up their TV or their mirrors if they perceive them to be portals that demons are coming out of? Um, the answer to that is, number one, the portals are not your TV and they're not a mirror. The portals are in you. It just seems as if that is where whatever you're experiencing is coming from. The way you can tell that it's only that the portal is in you and not in the TV is because if it were in the TV, then other people who come in contact with that TV would feel demons coming out of it. However, that doesn't mean you can't do something to that TV and affect what you're experiencing you may very well be able to put a black cloth over your TV, completely cover it, and all of a sudden you will not experience anything else coming out of that portal. The reason is because while you are doing something external, you are also tr triggering, you're sending pictures to your subconscious mind to do the same thing internally. What you are doing externally by covering your TV is sending a symbol to your subconscious mind that you want it to do the same thing to you. So while you cover the TV and all of a sudden any, anything that you perceived as coming from the TV stops, you are also doing something inside yourself that closes down this actual portal where anything would have been coming through that you would have been perceiving. But this doesn't mean that there aren't external energies. Uh, and intelligences. Before, I, I would also highly recommend, I'm going to be using a word that you don't come across very often in uh, English or any, any other language, honestly. And it's an uh, egregore is the word. Before we start, if you want to get deeper into this topic, I would highly suggest this book by Mark Stavish. He is a really well-respected author in uh, the magic community. He goes really in depth in, in ways that you don't find a lot of other books or a lot of other authors do just because he's covered so many different topics. Well, what an egregore is, is kind of a pocket of energy that is created by the energy of at least two or more people. You can do the same thing with one person, but with one person we usually call it a thought form. So for example, when you're doing the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, and you inhale and see the Archangel Raphael expand up in front of you, and you visualize that it's your breathing, the energy that you take in as you breathe is what's going into this angel, what's giving it its power. And just spend a few minutes, spend a couple of minutes standing there and inhaling and seeing it glow even brighter and more dense and brighter and more dense every time you inhale. What you are doing is creating a thought form. Now, does that mean that there is no 
actual angel Raphael. Like some outside intelligence that you didn't create. Yes, and that is created by all of the people who believe in, who work with, uh, who even mention the name Raphael or, or use it in artwork that makes people think about it. Um, it is made up of all of their combined energies. The one in front of you is just yours. However, you can sometimes form links to the one that is made up of everybody's belief, that is powered by everybody's faith. Because that's essentially what it is. It is it's, faith is like a, a fuel. All the people that have faith in Raphael are feeding energy into Raphael. You are creating a thought form what, that will eventually connect you to the egregore. That's what that is. That's an egregore. So you are creating a thought form that will connect you to the egregore. That's, that's what it does. Once that happens, the energy can flow from the egregore down into you. In the beginning days, when you're just learning how to do magic, um, it will only be your energy, only be your thought form, but that changes very quickly because these egregores are very eager to establish contact with us and help us. It's like they want to. It's like that's part of their, their the programming that's instilled in them by people's beliefs because that's what people believe that angels do. They help people. So we sort of program them to do that. Um, this is the same thing we're doing also in the HGA ritual. The HGA, all of magic is written in code, just like the Bible. You know, most people who pick up the Bible cannot read it. The, keep this in mind. The Bible is a book written by kings, written about kings, written for kings kings. It was never meant to be a book just consumed by the general public. This is because if if you were reading this, you were also supposing, it was supposed that you were being tutored and told the information that would allow you to decipher what you're reading at the same time. If, if that doesn't happen, if you don't have that key, it gives birth to what what we now know as religion. People who just worship these things without understanding them. You know, that's where you run into things like people who who believe that like a talking snake literally uh, brought about all of the misery in the world today. That is not what that stuff means. Um, you know, just one example would be when we're talking about the creation of everything, you know, when it's talking about in the beginning God created this, God created that. Well, when you get to God created the world, it talks about how he puts a firmament around the world that's made of water. What that actually represents is the human aura. That's what they're, that's what they're describing. Just like Aristotle's model of the universe, Aristotle didn't really believe that the universe, he didn't know if it was or not, he couldn't see it. What he was describing in his model of the universe are the levels and layers of our aura. Um, at any rate, when you are invoking the HGA, what you are trying to do is establish a connection to that egregore that is behind pretty much all of, of mankind's religion, all the way back to ancient Samaria when they called it Enlil, all the way up until, you know, the Jewish people called it YHVH, there were a bunch of other names in between. Uh, all the way up until now, it, the concept, what is happening is the concept is becoming more and more loosely defined as we go through time until now, you just kind of have this generic God of Protestantism. But what you're trying to do, what the HGA is, is that egregore. It is basically this God created by religion that is filled with energy you establish a connection to that and can draw on it in order to cross the abyss. There's a lot more I want to say about this, um, but I have to get started because I am 
recording today a six-week course with Sounds True on Angel Invocation. Uh, and I have to um, continue writing and get ready to do that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff involved with this, but I'm really, really excited about it. I don't think it's going to take very long to make it available once it's recorded and uh, it's going to be recorded this week. So um, I will talk to you guys back here again tomorrow. I hope you're well and uh, see you later.